today's going to be fun, guys. Today's going to be fun. We're going to be jumping inside of Unity, and we're going to be doing some really cool set dressing for the hotel level. So come on in, come on in. Let me make sure everybody's happy here. Let me open up the chat. Let's open up the chat. One sec. Good. Okay, it sounds like everybody's happy. By the way, I wanted to say thank you to Theobald Mortensen, Carter, Telford, John, Moser. Sorry, I put a capitalized O there. Sorry. Simon, Michael, Holly, Christopher, Mike, and Kyle. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, these students joined YouTube Game Dev, and so we are not sponsored, right? Um, we don't take sponsorships. By we, I mean me. I don't take sponsorships. But I do sponsor my own content with my own stuff. So this is called YouTube Game Dev. It's a massive course on how you can become a YouTube game dev. And it's actually possible to, to make more than six figures. In fact, I pay, I pay, before I signed with 3D Realms, I was paying two, no, yeah, two salaries and then some part-time workers. Uh, just because I had YouTube, a YouTube channel in addition to game sales. And so that brought in uh, a drip of income that was really, really helpful to me. So if you want to be supported and you want your project to be supported and you want to do it with YouTube and make games while you do it, check out YouTube Game Dev below. Six days left. Well, really it's about seven. 40% off. I believe there are over 100 seats left. It will close down, so be sure to check it out below. Also, we got some really sweet interviews in addition to this curriculum here with Jonas Tie Roller, Blackthorn Prod, Two Star Games, and Andreas at Bracky. So check it out below. And you also get some free courses as well. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All righty, guys. So this is what we're working on today. And by the way, how many of you were with us during yesterday's live stream? I want to show you kind of what we wrapped up um, in terms of the UI. <laughs> So obviously, we have this uh, we have this UI here, right? And this is brand new. I really love this UI. I think it's really pretty. I'm really proud of it. But also, if we go ahead and max out our weapons, you can see that I've updated not only the crosshairs here. See how they kind of look like a uh, Victorian crosshairs, pretty cool. Just those little subtle things make a big difference. But also, hey guys, I've also updated our weapon wheel. Pretty sweet. So we could choose our weapon, but they are cards, right? And I added some sound, let's see if we can... Yeah, let me switch out the right, get the proper sound here. There we go. So you should be able to hear it. So I did the uh, card sound effects today. I got out my deck of cards and I pointed my mic down and I recorded the sound effects for the cards. Custom sound effects. I'm just kidding, by the way. I just downloaded them. I just ruined my mic there. So here is what it looks like with the cards. The ammo is massive right now. That's because we cheated and got a ton of ammo. But even still, with massive amounts of ammo, you can still see. That sounds so good. So I'm really, really proud of it. I think it's awesome. Additionally, I wanted to share with you guys some music that I've written um, for the arenas, okay? The arenas are when you have a bunch of uh, um, like enemies spawning around you in a locked area. And so some cool music starts playing. So I wanted to show that to you. It kind of sounds like Walking Dead, I know, because the I think the core structure is very similar. But I, I thought, well, 
crap. At first I was like, crap. But then I was like, well, whatever, you know. They don't, they don't, I don't think they have, <laughs> I don't think The Walking Dead has rights to the, uh, the chord structure. Um, maybe they do. Uh, but here, here we go. Let's see if I can find it for you. But I wanted to show you some of the, um, some of the music. Here we go. So that's the general idea for the uh, the track when all the enemies start spawning around you and chaos ensues. But then we've also got an ambient track that will play like this. Right? So it's good to have a variety of different sounds to work with, something exciting and then something ambient, depending on the situation that the player's in. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our next task here. These pillars don't really match. Okay, and so I, I'm gonna try and figure out how to get them to match this environment. I just feel like they're not matching. It could be that we just wanna do red and, and black. Yeah. So let's try that out, okay guys? we go. So we're going to go to our yellows, crank up the red. Try that. I feel like that basically solves the issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same colors as the bow. I think it works. <laughs> I think that's all we need to do. Just need it to be um, a vibrant sort of bloody red, right? So that's good. How to think of a new game idea and how do I know that this is a perfect for a commercial release? Abhinav Katana, that's a great question. What I would do is I would think about the big butt principle and I would combine that with, I would combine that with the Trinity, the idea of a Trinity hook. And both ideas are things that I've been using for a while, or at least the last two years. Firstly, the big butt principle is think of something popular and then add a twist, okay? Um, so for this game, it's like Bioshock but Disney, Bioshock but Willy Wonka. Um, that really helps a lot. It's a quick way to come up with a, a very clever hook. Then I would use the Trinity hook, which is the, think of the visual hook of your game. How does it look? How does it feel? How does it sound? The mechanical hook, what makes it unique, right, mechanically, and then also the story hook. What, what is so special about the story? And you can use the big butt principle with all three of those. Um, okay, let's jump into the, the texture work here. I think, let's see here. 
Let's fly through the level and look for some ways to make the textures feel a little bit more fantasy. Um, I kind of feel like the red is used a lot here. And so I wonder with the red what we could do. And by the way, the situation we're currently in is we've decided to take the game in a much more uh, fairy tale direction and a much more Walt Disney direction. So we're kind of trying to take what we've got uh, and then add tweaks to it. So instead of redoing everything, we're just tweaking stuff. Okay. So for example, we have these stripes, right? What can we do to these stripes to make it feel more fairy tale, right? Well, the best word is the word flourish. So we're going to look for some interesting flourishes we could add here. And you want to use Art Deco flourishes if possible. Yeah, those were just some gizmos, that's right. Pepe, is Pepe in the chat? I haven't talked to Pepe in a long time. And Gordon's in the chat. By the way, guys, Gordon is our lead developer for Twisted Tower. So please say hello to Gordon Arbor. This might work, but maybe not. Let's type in flourish and just see if we can get a spiral flourish. Thomas, why do you not have a Patreon? This is from Rick. Um, because, you know, if income is the goal of a Patreon, and, I, you know, I'm very limited with time, all of us are, not just me, then the idea is, well, how do I, how do I continue to make income for me and my team? Um, what's the best way to do it? And one of the best ways I can think of is to teach you guys what I know. And so that's why I, instead of doing Patreon, I create valuable content for you guys um, for the courses. And it's super, super, super helps us out financially. So I really appreciate it. Keeps us moving, keeps us making games, keeps us live streaming. So I really appreciate it. Okay, let's bring it down here. And these are set to black as well. So I don't know, let's see how this looks. Just save it out and just see. You can see it's everywhere now. And so we might want to make it much bigger and see what happens if we just drop down the opacity. Hey Iron, how are you? Hmm, how do we do this? Let's think through here. What could we do? Well, I think one thing we could definitely do is make it so that the stripes, man, what textures are we using? Let's see. Sorry guys, I'm sort of figuring this out as we go. I'm trying to make it feel more fantasy or uh, more fairy tale. And so we have a lot of stripes. Um, I wonder if what we could do is add some wood. I don't know. I just feel like if we added some like wood here, so for example, um, if we go to floor three or floor four, don't save. I, I think we want to do wood. Let's try it out. Thomas, do you sometimes feel like your hooks aren't strong enough, but they're more like cool gimmicks? If yes, how do you keep your motivation? Sure, I think that's definitely a problem. I think most game developers struggle with that. I love this right here, um, this wood panel. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the normal map for this wood, uh, the, the normal map and the actual albedo. And I'm gonna see about putting this inside of the, um, the wallpaper. I mean, I just, I just feel like this might be a cool idea. I'm trying to make it so that the first floor and the second floor feel more like a hotel, more like a children's hotel um, or children's themed, kind of like art of animation uh, at Disney World. So. 
Cuck Max says, can you teach us how to gym? Yes, let's go for it. We'll do it right now, okay? The first, if I'm being dead serious. For those of you who want to start getting into the gym, um, did you say that? How to gym, yeah, sure, okay. For those of you who wanna get into the gym, uh, the first thing you gotta do, let's talk about the technical side and then we'll talk about the, the emotional side of it. The first thing you need to do is get some sort of hard copy something. Uh, I like books so I can write down all the information, okay? Then what you're gonna do, I'm gonna take this really quick here and just grab that. Then which, so I highly recommend, I'm just gonna give you the basics here, uh, or just exactly what I do. Get Michael Matthews one year challenge, or it's year one challenge. I've been using it for six years. And it's a nice book that helps you. Would that is that going to be enough? Maybe not. We'll see. Um, but what you want to do with that is fill. You you basically do five day workouts, okay? Um, and it tells you exactly what to do. And if you don't know how to do a specific exercise that's written in the charts, you just literally YouTube it and then do the exercise. So that's step one. Um, then just commit to a certain amount of days a week. So I've committed to five days a week. I've been doing that for six years. And that's, um, that's basically all you got to do. It's not that hard. Uh, it's not like I'm perfect or anything, but that's really all you got to do. Let's hit save here. Take a look at this. So down below, that actually could really work. Feel, it feels more like a hotel, you know? Um, however, I'm going to make sure that we have taller, like this right here is really what I want. So I'm going to actually take this right here. Okay. Now let's talk about weight training principles. Uh, going heavy with lower reps is ideal in my opinion. So basically six reps and you do that three times per exercise. So if you're doing bench press, you aim for six reps for three sets. So it's, you know, one, I don't know, 145. And then you go up five pounds on each side, so 10 total, 155, six reps, and then 165. And I aim to fail on the third set. So fail means you only get like four or five, and you're going as hard as you can. Um, Luke says, okay, so that there's so many questions here about this, um, or so many things that I want to talk about, but going heavy is how you build muscle going light with high repetitions, or even just doing cardio is how you lose weight. Now let's go ahead and Google search. How many calories are in a a double or a big double which is my favorite thing on the planet so there are 400 calories in a mcdouble okay guys so how many miles do you have to run who can guess how many miles do you have to run to burn um to burn 400 calories how many miles do you have to run to burn 400 calories does anybody know Nope, not 23. And I'll tell you my, Lylan, I'll give you my, my daily routine here in a bit. Yep. It's about, it could be two to, depends on how fast you do it, it could be two to five miles. So in order for you to burn off one McDouble, one tiny little bad decision, you have to run four freaking miles. So one of you asked about, well, okay, should I just change my diet or should I work out? And the answer is, well, what's your goal, right? If your goal is to lose weight, you should just change your diet. You don't really have to worry too much about cardio, just change your diet. And as long as you're losing, let's say, half a pound a week on average, if you weigh yourself every morning after you take a dump, weigh yourself butt naked, every morning write it down as long as you're losing half a pound to a pound a week 
then just slowly tweak your diet every week until you're losing weight. If you run or do cardio, that's an additional 150 to 200. Seriously, it's only going to be about 200 calories you burn from cardio. I'm sorry. It could be 400. It could be 400. You could go all the way up to 400, 500 if you go really hard. But how many people want to do that, right? So let's, let's go ahead and take a look really quick in this room here. I want to see how tall we need to make these. Um, let's see here. Let's go over here. Yeah, let's, let's go back to, oh crap. I'm trying to figure out how tall we need to make these wood, wood uh, panels. I think that's tall enough. Yep, okay, so let's talk really quick about muscle growth. So that's how to lose weight, how to gain muscle. What are the two macro nutrition, macro ingredients you need to gain muscle? They're two of the most important ones, okay? You can't have one without the other, not really, unless you're taking steroids. Who knows the two? The two macro nutri nutrients to build muscle are, there are two. They're very important. Nope, you don't need carbs, not, not carbs. Protein and what else? The carbs will convert to something to build the muscle. So carb, yes, you could consume carbs, but it's eventually going to turn into what? Yes, it's protein and fat. So this is why people bulk, okay? Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, but I can get fat from carbs. You can. If you, if you eat enough carbs, it'll, when you eat carbs, if your body doesn't burn the carbs, because the body burns carbs faster than fat. So if you, if, you, if you eat a few amount of carbs, the body will burn it for the daily expenditure. Or if you eat enough carbs, it'll convert to fat. Or you can just eat fat. So people eat a lot of fat. They bulk up. And the only way that the seed of protein, a.k.a. muscle, can grow is it needs the soil of fat. You build up the muscle, and then in the summer or in whenever you want, you cut down for three months, and the fat burns faster than the protein. A, the muscle. Does that make sense? There are good and bad fats, I guess, but ultimately even, I mean, just follow Sam Selleck. Uh, Sam Selleck? Yeah, Sam Selleck. But he's on steroids. <laughs> he's juicing hard. Um, but you need, you need it. You can't, but how many grams of protein should you eat? Every, how, if you want to gain muscle, how many grams of protein should you eat a day? Per pound of body fat or per pound of body weight, how many grams should you eat? <laughs> That's right. How many grams? Josiah says 0. 0.7. It's one, I, in my opinion. I don't know, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not perfect, and I, I have plenty to do, but one is what I've found to be effective. Yeah. Um, so it's easy. One per, so if you're 180 pounds and you want to gain muscle, just eat 180. And then as you go up in weight, just keep adding more. So for me, it's 40 grams of protein five days, five times a day. Does that make sense? Because I'm 200 pounds. What if you want to be sculpted and lean? Well, if you want lean muscle, you need to make sure you have the muscle before you go lean. Otherwise, you'll just be scrawny. So what you want to do is bulk up for four months, gain about 15 pounds, and 15 to 20 pounds, and then lean back down. And hopefully you can lean down like 10, 15, 10 pounds, and the rest is muscle. I'm just uh, telling you the stuff that's worked for me. Um, yeah. Okay, so I don't think I'm gonna worry about making those panels. Instead, we're gonna make cartoon faces, okay? That's what we're gonna do. Cartoon faces for our wallpapers here. Um, Ode says, if you can't, just eat what is available, what mom makes. Yeah, right? Um, let's see, if I can cut a circle out of this, that would be awesome. 
Yeah. Okay, we can cut a circle out of this. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to make a teddy bear face. Or even just a teddy bear symbol. Just something that gives a little bit more of a playful atmosphere to the texture work. Now this one here is going to be, I'm gonna save this. We're gonna call this wallpaper striped yellow teddy, okay? Um, what else can I tell you guys? Okay, let's talk about the psychology of it, okay? The reason people don't do things is because they don't want it. That's, that's the primary psychology of most things. The reason you don't do something is because you don't want it. That's basically all it comes down to. It's really simple. You're not going to the gym because you don't want it. It's really that simple. You're not losing weight because you don't want to, generally. Now some of you say, but Thomas, I really, really wanted it, but then I lost motivation. What, what you're saying is you stopped wanting it. Because if I really, really want a slice of pizza, I'm not gonna somehow not eat a slice of pizza. I'm going to eat a slice of pizza. So the problem, the reason most people don't do things because they don't want it. Um, so the, the, the solution to this question is how do you learn or how do you make it so that you do want it? And that's the trick for, with I think most successful people. They know how to teach or preach to themselves about why they should want something. And in fact, uh, the truth is, is that a lot of people want something for a little while and then they stop wanting it. And I'm guilty of this too. So the ultimate goal is to figure out when you do want something and you know it's a good thing. Like for example, you really want to lose weight or you really want to gain muscle or you want to finish your game. The truth is, is that when you want it, that moment when you've got that sort of clarity and you want something, you need to really meditate on why exactly you want something and write it down. Because in a week or two, you're going you're to forget. Or you'll justify it. Or it's not necessarily that you don't want this. It's just that you want something else. Pizza, Netflix and chill, beer, go out and party with your friends, blah, 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 sleep. All right, so how's this gonna look on this wall here? I'm gonna duplicate this material. Striped yellow teddy bear. Now, there's two solutions to this problem. The first one is you don't want something, so how do you want it again, right? Well, the way you do it is you reference why you wanted it to begin with, right? So we just talked about that. You read um, something you wrote down when you did want it, or you go back to watching videos that you were watching. YouTube's a big source of inspiration for a lot of people. And so what happens is, is they, they basically, they, they're watching a YouTube channel, they're really excited, or they're following someone on Instagram, they're really excited, and then they stop following that person and they lose excitement. So it's really important for you to surround yourself with people who are excited with you. And even if that means just following the right people on social media, right? Um, so we live in a very special time and people don't realize this. Whereas in the past, if you wanted to get, if you wanted success and you wanted to grow and become successful, you had to go seek out people in your community and l become their friend to actually get inspired and grow with them, whether it's financially, spiritually, emotionally, socially, or physically. Now, because of social media, you guys can find those friendships. They're not real, but get inspired and surround yourself with the right people on social media to actually get inspired and stay inspired. So that's solution number one. Solution number two is to make it less difficult when you do lose motiv motivation. So what are some ways, let's brainstorm, if you guys want to lose weight or you want to you want to get strong and you want to go to the gym what are some ways that you can make it less difficult now the actual act of of eating a good meal the actual act of going to the gym that is very difficult but what can we do on the front end and back end what can we do
let's brainstorm. What are some things? Yes, metaverse, meal prep. So every Sunday, throw some chicken in there, not in the toilet, in the oven. Throw in some broccoli and some rice. And slam them into some plastic containers and then put it in your freezer so that you have at least seven dinners, right? Uh, yep, so meal prep is a huge one. Um, habit trackers are cool. Um, when it comes to the gym, this is a big one. For me, I've found that it's really, really hard when winter comes. I do not want to go to a physical gym. I don't want to drive anywhere because it's freezing cold in the morning. And the idea of getting out of my cozy, snuggly bed and going to the gym is so hard for me. And I think it's hard for a lot of people. So that's why you need to invest in a home gym of some kind, whether it's just a few weights or some bands. Or for me, I've got a, a, a whole get up because this is something, this is the sec. Game dev and, and, and weight training are my two favorite things. So I, I, I went all out with my gym in my home, uh, in my home garage. So that's, uh, that makes it so much easier because you really don't have an excuse, do you? It's right there. It's like literally right there. So you really have to find ways to make it easier on yourself so that you really don't have an excuse. Um, but not, knowledge ultimately is power. So if you don't... Like, everyone is so, we're not doing game dev today, are we? Everyone is so, there's like hypocrisy or lies or something. I don't know what the right word is, but everyone says, I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't do this and I can't do that because I don't know how. Yet, they can figure out a way to maximize their skills at playing Pokemon. They can figure out a way to maximize, uh, their characters in Animal Crossing. They can figure out the way to maximize their profiles or their characters for, for Minecraft. So don't lie to me and pretend that you can't figure stuff out. You can, you just don't want to. So ultimately, it's not, knowledge is gonna get you all of the power you need to do what you know you need to do and all you have to do is go to YouTube and look it up. What is a macro? Burnt. How do I get muscle? Burnt. How do I build a home gym for zero dollars? Burnt. You can figure it out. Don't pretend you can't figure it out. You can pull weeds all day on Animal Crossing, but you can't figure out how to do ten curls on on ten th three sets of ten curls. So I don't want to hear it. We are such a spoiled generation, especially Americans, because we have everything, we have everything we need on our phones to learn everything. Yet we don't. We're also some of the laziest, most out of shape people on the planet ever. Yet we have all the information we need right here. So I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Odyssey. Odysseus, yeah. Okay, let's see. <laughs> that, so that's 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 the the there's the psychological there, there's the how to lose weight, and there's also how to gain strength. All three of those. I gave you everything. Michael Matthews is is my favorite. Michael Matthews book on strength training for men. Um and then Michael Matthews Strength Training for Men uh sort of diary that you can buy. I've been buying those over and over and over and over again for six years. <sighs> All right. Teddy bear. Let's see if we can find a good one. You know what really helps guys? Most things come down to identity. So um, here's an example. If everyone around you, let's say you, listen to this, this is crazy. Let's say you started going to the gym and you went to the gym for two weeks straight and everyone around you was calling you daily saying, you are a gym bro. I am so inspired by you. Tell me how you do it. 
You're amazing. You are the gym guy. I have never seen someone so disciplined as you. You are a disciplined person. I am so impressed by how disciplined you are, how much of a gym bro you are. Notice how they're seeding you with identity, 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 identity. When something becomes your identity, suddenly you become that. And for you to reject, here's the funny thing, for you to say, I'm not gonna go to the gym tomorrow or not gonna go on Friday or Saturday or whatever, you slowly start to um, peel away this new identity that felt so good. And so human beings, we, be, we like to brand ourselves. Just look at bios. We, we want to brand ourselves with everything. We like to be part of a brand. And so identity is a big part of it. A lot of people say, I'm not the guy with tats, or I'm not the guy with earrings, or I'm not the guy who wears this kind of clothing, or I'm not the guy with this kind of truck, or I'm not the gym bro, or I'm not this, or I'm not that, or I'm not this, or I'm not that. You are what you are only by doing it. So the people who are tattoo people, they are that because they did it, not because they were born <laughs> born that way. The people who are gym bros are not the people who were born gym bros, right? Or fitness people. They became that because they decided that that was going to be their identity. The cool thing about being a human being is you're allowed to write your own identity whenever you want. Okay? So if you wake up tomorrow morning and you want to be a gym bro, or you want to learn how to work out, or you want to be a game dev, don't put in your bio that I'm a wannabe game dev because I see so many people do that. I'm a wannabe this, or I'm a wannabe that. Just say you're that. You become what you do. So just start doing it and then you can become that. And when you start putting that label on yourself, it's very difficult to rip it off because it feels good to be an identity. Does that make sense? So we have, <laughs> we have a beautiful little teddy bear here. Yeah, aspiring game dev. As I'm an aspiring game dev. Just say you're a game dev. Come on. It's not hard. I get very frustrated by that because it, it, there's so much. Uh, it's almost a proud insecurity. You're too proud to just let yourself be something that you know you are, but you're scared to say it out loud because you don't want people to be upset with you. It's really weird. Um, okay, so we've got this cool little teddy bear here. Let's take a look. It's not my favorite, and the reason why is because it's not centered. Hmm. Camera's off. It keeps turning off. All right. So that teddy bear is just not working. I don't think we're going to get anything done today, guys. Let's see here. My camera keeps shutting off. I'm not sure there's much wallpaper stuff we want to do here, guys. I mean, we could probably do like a teddy bear pattern. I mean, sort of running down the sides here. Let's type in teddy bear and, or paw print maybe. Gordon Harbor says, oh yeah? Show me how much money you made as a game dove. Yeah, this is the funniest one is some people, very few people will say, Thomas isn't a game dev, Thomas is a YouTuber. That's like saying, you're not a, you're not a human, you're, you're a, a truck driver. Like if you were, let's say you're a truck driver. You're not a human, you're a truck driver. Or um, you don't play basketball, you eat lunch. Why, 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 can only, like, why can I only be one thing? You can be whatever you want to be. And you can, do a, you can do five things at once. So I, I run three different businesses. And I sort of just run them all, all day long. Spinning plates. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's see if these paw prints look good. But remember, we're in the 1920s, so let's try and find one that looks a little bit more 1920s. 
Thomas, are you attending GDC? Maybe. We shall see. Thomas can listen to Game Dev and also listen to Lana Del Rey. <laughs> da Vinci isn't a painter. He's a he's an inventor. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a uh, it's definitely annoying. Um, it, well, it's a it's sort of a it's a very small minded way to think about uh, the modern era of making money. Um, you can do you could do a ton of different things at once. Um, you don't have to only do one thing anymore. That's, that's a, I don't, I, I really don't have a, a problem with boomers. So I'm not saying, okay, boomer here. I'm just saying that's what the, the boomer generation thinks. It's like you, this is your job. And then you come home and you turn on the news. That's what you do, son. Instead, now it's like, how about I just do whatever I want whenever I want and if it's making me money, it's just five different sources of income. That could work. I think that if we, I don't know y'all, this, this live stream got out of hand. You asked the wrong question. Hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't think we need to do anything here, honestly. I think that's it for the live stream. Thanks for hanging out, guys. <laughs> we, we didn't get anything done. Oh man. But if you want to join YouTube Game Dev below and you want to get rants like that one, but about how to be a YouTuber, check out YouTube Game Dev below. We've got six days left. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game. And let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up. Your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.